Hey everybody, it's Jason Blah here, and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about one of my favorite exercises, the deficit deadlift, and why I like it so much, why I use it so much. Uh, again, for maxes, sometimes for rep work, depending upon what different clients are doing in their programming or myself. And this particular set of stuff all came from the same workout. It was me ramping up to a training max and then doing some, some back off fives. Uh, all of them using a stiff bar. And I do oftentimes like to use a stiff bar instead of a deadlift bar on deficits, not always, uh, mainly because it emphasizes the deficit even more. Hey, it emphasizes it even more, also forces you to train grip a little bit more, and deficits themselves train grip a little bit more because we have to pull the weight a longer distance. So what are the big benefits of the deficit deadlift? And here's the one that I think people get wrong. Um, this is a discussion Tom Martin and I had, and if you don't know who he is, look up world record deadlifts. Uh, Tom and I had a discussion about this, I think like a year ago, might have been further back. We were chatting in Messenger about it. Uh, and Tom had pretty much had agreed with me when I had made a post saying that deficit deadlifts are not intended to make you faster off the floor. They're a lockout tool. And, you know, that... It confuses a lot of people because a lot of people go, well, that doesn't make sense. They should help you off the floor, you know, because you're pulling from a deeper position. But that's actually not true because usually when you're weak off the floor, you're slow the first few inches. Okay. It's not, you're not missing right at the floor. If you miss at the floor and don't pull it off the floor, you just aren't strong enough to lift it. Enormous difference there. Enormous difference. Hey, so low block pulls or pin pulls are better for that. So pulling off like a two or a three inch block actually helps you more uh, with the start position, right? Because you are coming from a dead stop through the point where you're, you're decelerating the most, which is again, well below the, the knee. If you're missing lifts or below the mid shin or about the mid shin, you need to be starting close to that position, right? And you would train off of blocks accordingly. The deficit, much like the close grip bench, you know, on a close grip bench press, we point out uh, it tends to be limited on lockout, not off the chest, right? Tends to be limited on lockout, not off the chest. When we miss deficit deadlifts, a lot of times we miss the lockouts on them if we fail the lift or fail the rep. And it's because of the acceleration curve, right? We're, we're having to pull the weight from a longer distance and build more speed early on so that we can complete better. And because we're pulling a longer distance, again, it trains the lockout, just like a closed grip bench press trains your lockout for your flat bench. Okay, everyone understand that? Where do you usually miss closed grip benches near the lockout? Where do you usually miss deficit deadlifts around the knee or higher? It's where you tend to miss them. Because if you can break it off the floor, you'll get it to the knee almost 90% of the time. Okay, so, it's not intended to build your your power for missing just off the floor. All right, the other benefits of it, uh, it forces you to use a lighter weight. And I think that's something I've seen uh, my friend Chris Duffin say before. I've heard him mention that, that he used to like to uh, train deficits going into a meet because he knows that anything he pulls in a deficit, even a one or a two inch deficit, that he would absolutely hit it in a competition even if he's fatigued, if he's having a bad day, he knows he'd be able to hit it because that deficit replicated that and it has full carryover. In other words, you can train deficit deadlifts exclusively and walk in and go to pull a normal conventional and it will have a hundred percent carryover. Odds are you will be slightly stronger. Okay. So because it's a harder lift and we look at it from the hypertrophy perspective, uh, what is the number one complaint about the deadlift? the lack of range of motion on most of the joints involved. But look at how deep we have to hinge. Look at that hinge difference, just standing on a one inch plate and having to pull everything from the bottom, okay? So let's say we go to the stiffer bar and we're pulling off of even a one inch deficit. The mechanics of the bottom of the lift change. When we look at what's happening with the body, more muscles are put into a lengthened position as a result of that. All right, look at the hip ankle. The entire change on a deficit deadlift is a, is a deeper hip ankle. 
So look at my hips there, where they're positioned relative to my torso. You're leaning into them more. Hey, what does this mean for a lengthened position on things like the hamstrings? To put into a more lengthened position. Same thing with the glutes. Same thing with the back. We're at a, a deeper angle. We have to bend over more. So if you think about even the isometric parts of the back, because it's been noted in, in studies, at least EMG, and like I said, EMG isn't everything, that the lats light up on deadlifts harder than they do on a lot of uh, back exercises. So in terms of the isometrics involved, we're forcing an even stronger isometric because of the angles involved for the entire middle and upper back. Now, how much that part's worth in hypertrophy, uh, we can't say because, again, isometrics are not necessarily the best tool for hypertrophy, right? They're not as good as dynamic movements going into a lengthened position. And I, and I think anyone who's, who looks at the literature understands that. They agree on that. That's, that's not a point of, of debate that someone's going to say you're wrong and have evidence of. We know they're not the best. It can produce some hypertrophy. But if you're trying to do that, then it's going to work even better there. But what is undeniable is the fact that we are putting more mechanical tension into a more lengthened position for a lot of the muscles of the posterior chain. So if we are chasing hypertrophy, this is going to be better than our normal deadlift. All right, number one. Number two, what else is, is noted on the deadlift of why a lot of people don't like it for hypertrophy? The amount of axial loading. Well, if we're forced to take 10 pounds off the bar for our deficit for the same rep work or 20 pounds, our axial loading reduces. It's a little easier on our recovery. And I'm not saying deficit deadlifts don't impact our recovery because they do. There's still a fair amount of axial loading, but we can reduce and mitigate that a little bit while getting the muscles into a more lengthened position. Now, when I say that, people say, well, there's still not the greatest stimulus to fatigue exercise. Well, that's okay. We don't need all of our exercises to have a great stimulus to fatigue. Some really high fatigue exercises are good. They force adaptation. It's just that we don't want our whole workouts built around them, especially stuff we do in the latter half of a, of a workout. Yeah, it needs to be low fatigue, high stimulus. But a lot of our bigger movements early on, we don't have to follow that rule. So just keep that in mind. We can still have very high fatigue exercises and they still produce a lot of benefits. So it's about finding that balance. But the deficit deadlift falls into that category, just like snatch grip deadlifts do, of we can get a better stimulus to fatigue than on a traditional deadlift while doing a movement that still has 100% carryover to your max deadlift. All right, guys, but well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.